Okay, hi there, and welcome to a video explaining the concept of creative destruction. So the term creative destruction was first coined by Joseph Schumpeter in his book Capitalism, Socialism and Democracy, published in 1942. Schumpeter was an economist of the Austrian school, and Austrian school economists advocated a laissez-faire approach to economic policy, uh, and they argued that uh, the growth of an economy was often driven by long wave cycles brought about perhaps by a big step change in technology or significant innovation. Uh, innovation uh, destroys some jobs, so that's the disruptive, destructive bit of it, but it also creates others. The businesses that have been around for a long time, the profits, the market power of those businesses, uh, ebbs and flows as the process of dynamic efficiency and creative destruction gathers momentum. So innovation is both a strong source of market power. Entrepreneurs can therefore compete with existing firms in an industry, uh, eroding their profits and their market share, and eventually perhaps becoming even more powerful than, than them. How does invention differ from innovation? Is there a difference? I think there is. Invention is essentially the act of coming upon something or finding something very new. It could be a new product, a very new process. Innovation is the practical application of new inventions into marketable products and services. It's the, it's the creation of new intellectual assets. It's making changes to something already established. So innovation embraces a wide range of things, from, from just becoming more efficient at producing uh, what you already do, to, to major, major breakthroughs in different markets. Key distinction is between a sustaining innovation and a disruptive innovation. So many new products are quite similar, or if you like, incremental to existing ones. A, a new version of a drug, an updated app, for example, they would be sustaining innovations. What Schumpeter was talking about was disruptive innovation. Innovation that upsets the status quo, that creates gales of creative destruction. So Netflix and other online streaming services are challenging the film companies. Uber is a powerful challenge to the taxi companies, including London, London Black Cabs. Airbnb is challenging the dominant hotel chains in many cities and towns across the world. So what are some good examples of creative destruction. Well, there are loads of examples from the past. The rise of portable computers and iPads and things and printers essentially ended the, needed, ended the need for typewriters, for example. Here are four examples, I think, of current disruptive technologies. The online travel platforms are threatening the high street travel agents because many people now just book their holidays and their travel um, online. They, they avoid the travel agent. The rise of 3D printing, otherwise known as additive printing, is a big threat to component manufacturers and distributors because in many cases you can now print on site. You have a 3D printer and you have the technology and the software. You can make your own parts if you're a producer. Driverless cars, autonomous vehicles, well, they threaten lots of industries. For example, motor insurance, in theory, there'll be fewer vehicle collisions with advanced software that's, used, that, that's powering the autonomous vehicles. Electric vehicles are much more low maintenance. So as we move more towards hybrid and fully electric vehicles, what future for car repair garages, particularly as more drivers switch to, to low maintenance electric cars. So there's a few examples of creative destruction at work. The disruptor threatens existing jobs. Finally, let's just think about how you can link this concept of creative destruction to other key economics topics for the exam. So there's obviously a powerful relationship between creative destruction and dynamic efficiency. It's a key part of the dynamic efficiency of markets. But crucially, creative destruction is helping to make many markets and industries more contestable over time, challenging the market power and the supernormal profits of existing dominant firms. 
It's also, of course, causing uh, changes in the labour market. And of course, there is the big risk, robotics, automation, artificial intelligence, that uh, there could be an increase in structural unemployment in our fast changing labour market. Uh, creative destruction also important in terms of the wider competitiveness of individual businesses, multinationals included, and the competitiveness of countries inside the, the global economy. And there's also a link to fiscal policy. So the likes of Uber and Airbnb and Netflix and others, the disruptors, are they profitable, first of all? Are they paying their taxes? So is there a consequence on the fiscal side? For example, driverless cars. The government in the UK over many, many years has come to rely on billions of pounds every year from fuel duty and uh, other forms of, of transport taxation, including car insurance premium. Will that lead to a big fall in the tax revenues of the UK government as people switch, first of all, to electric vehicles and who knows, to autonomous vehicles? So lots of links between creative destruction and other parts of your A-level economics course. Okay, well, thanks for joining in this short video on the economics of creative destruction.